everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we are painting up the newest member of the Ogre Moor tribes. Yes, we have the Blood Pelt Hunter here, sent to me early by Games Workshop to paint up for all of you. And, well, what we're going to do is jump in and start painting him. He has been primed in Wraithbone and, well, the colour we're going to be using first is Fire Slayer Flesh because we're going to be working on his skin first. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up our brush here with this colour and we're just going to start painting this all over all of his skin. So we've got his feet, of course, it's the best place to start so that we don't forget to do them as I am wont to do. We've got his arms and his chest and his head. If you need a hand looking at where all of this skin is, do you just check out the box art. There are some little bits that might surprise you. For example, around the back of his head. So with that Fire Slayer Flesh applied to all of the skin, as you can see, what we're going to do now is move on to our next colour. And that is going to be his trousers. The colour we're going to be using for this is Gore Grunter Fur. With that Gore Grunt of Fur applied to his trousers, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Garagak Sewer. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the wood. So we've got the crossbow. And we've got the spears on his back as well. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down grey sear. I'm going to use this to basically paint over the top of all of our sort of greyish wraps. So we've got these ones around the legs. Like that. We've got these ones around the crossbow. there we got this one just here and this one here as well so just whilst we're waiting for that to dry what we're going to do is we're going to take some black legion i'm going to use this to paint in a couple of different details so firstly we've got this large strap going along his shoulder That. 
we've got the various little ties going around his face there. We've got this little strap just here, which we want to make sure that we get, like that. And we've got the little bits of leather tying shut the head down here as well. And we've got the shafts of the arrows. So with that Black Legion applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to use this to paint in the remaining areas of the string that we didn't paint with the Grey Seer. Don't worry, we're getting to the Grey Seer in just a minute. going to do is we're going to pick out these little fangs around the head. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some soul blight grey. We're going to use this over the top of those areas that we painted with the grey seer. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly two to one mix of contrast medium and Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to be applying this over the top of the fur pelt that appears both here and there on the front as well. So we'll just start with that front section just there. I'm just going to get this on there. Just like that. Now it's not going to be a very strong colour, but that's okay because that's what we want. Rather than layering it up, we're going to do a series of blends to darken it down, like so. So that's the first one, and then similarly. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take Agrax Earthshade on its own. And we're going to apply this as our little blend now, what we're going to do. So we're going to start kind of around about sort of this kind of area just here on the pelt. So I'm just going to apply this Agrax Earthshade all over like this. Going to do is going to wash our brush and then we're just going to smooth out those transitions by kind of dabbling away and just moving that paint around like so and i'm going to do the same thing here on this i think it's a leg maybe a tail Brush and then just smooth it out like so. 
And then finally, along the kind of spine of the pelt, I'm gonna add this going from around here all the way along. So you should get a pretty hard line. Yeah, like that. Let me wash the brush. And again, we run our clean brush. Over the top like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and wildwood, and we're going to do much the same thing, only this time a little bit less. So around about this kind of area, just there on the leg, we're going to add the wildwood mix. Like that. And we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to smooth out that transition once again, just by passing over the top, like so. And I'm going to do the same thing just here as well, like this. Wash the brush. brush like that. And similarly on the face, which we did do a little bit of Agrax Earth shade on, which I forgot to mention before. I'm going to add a little bit of this wildwood around the eye, like so. I'm going to add a little bit of it just here, around the snout. And we're going to once again wash the brush take most of that off like that and then lastly along that back I'm going to use this to paint in all of the spines but it's not really spines it's the hair like that wash that brush and then once again just smooth it out. Like so. Just whilst we're waiting for that to dry and because we've got it out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some wildwood. I'm gonna use this on the grip of the axe, which is just down here. Like that. And what we're also So with that done, just to finish off the pelt, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some black templar and we're gonna apply this towards the absolute kind of bottom part of the pelt, like that. Then we're gonna wash the brush. And then we're just gonna once again smooth it out into the brown. Like that. Do the same thing again. Just here. And then we're going to apply a little bit of this to the eye and to the nose. Just a little bit that kind of comes along here. Wash the brush. And smooth it out.
So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Agrax Earth Shade. We're going to apply this over the top of the bag. Back here. Just like this. So with that Agrax Earth Shade applied, we're then gonna take some Gilliman Flesh and we're gonna apply this over the top of the skin of the bear and over the top of the bones. Just like this. And we're going to apply this over the top of the arm. So, with that done, we're going to take some Caraber Crimson. I'm going to use this to shade. Our oh, bear's ribs and flesh. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Eldari Emerald and we're going to apply this over the top of our dinosaur. And just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take two colours. We're going to take Agrax Earth Shade and Wildwood. We're going to use this on the antlers up here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take that Agrax Earth Shade on our brush. And we're going to apply this over the top of the antler. Just like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of wildwood and then towards the, the end of it, we're going to add the wildwood in whilst it's still wet. I'm just going to wash the brush, grab a little bit more Agrax Earth Shade, and we're just going to use that to kind of smooth out that transition just a little bit to get this kind of nice subtle blend between the two, like that. I'm gonna do this of course on both antlers and on the other side as well. With those antlers done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take two colors, Gut Ripper Flesh and Achillean Green, and we're gonna be using this over the top of the Saurian skin. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna firstly load up our brush with Gut Ripper Flesh, and we're just gonna pick a couple of areas to add this. So we're just gonna whack it down like that, over the top of the back part of the Saurian. We're going to wash the brush and then we're going to take a little bit of Achillean green and add that in over the top like that sort of thing. We'll do the same thing again towards the snout. Like that. Wash the brush. Grab some of that Achillean green and get it in there. And 
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Blood Angels Red. We're going to apply this to the fletchings on all the arrows. And so with that done, it is now time to paint in pretty much all of our remaining details using some thinned down iron warriors. So we've got all of our spear blades and crossbow bolts, the axe on his back, the kind of sword at his belt, the chest piece. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Rune Lord Brass. I'm going to apply this to the pommel of the sword and the cross guard as well. Like that. And we're also going to apply this to these two large rivets on the large strap there, like that. So with that done, it is now time to add some shades to the model. And the first one we're going to add is Null Oil. I'm going to be applying this over the top of our bandages that we did for the Soul Blight Grey. Because we don't want to just bring those down just a little bit more. Just like this. And in addition to that, we're going to use this null oil to shade the chest plate here, but not the rest of the silver. We can do that with a different color. With that null oil applied, we're then going to take some Targor Raid Shade. I'm going to apply this to all of our remaining silver details, and we're going to use this to shade those Rune Lord brass sections as well. And with that done, we're then going to take some Corellia Green Shade and we're going to use this to shade our Dino. Now blend all of our colours together. So with that done, our Blood Pelt Hunter is now what I would call a War Hipster battle ready. He's already looking pretty fantastic. However, we're not going to leave him there. No, what we are going to do is we're going to take him to the next level. I'm going to do this by adding some layers and some highlights. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're going to use this to relayer all of our ogre's muscles and his face and feet. And what we're going to do is we're going to avoid anywhere that's a recess or where the shade has settled. I'm just going to get this all over just like this. Now I might take a couple of thin coats. So you just take your time here. Just like this. So with that Cadian Flesh Tone all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Kisler Flesh. And we're going to kind of do exactly the same thing again, only this time what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit narrower than we did before. And we've got it thinned down a little bit more than we would normally as well, just so we've got lots of control here. It kind of acts more like a glaze. 
maybe sort of two or three parts water. So with that now done, what we're gonna do, just specifically on his muscles, is we're gonna take some Reichlin Flesh Shade and we're gonna paint it all over, but then we're gonna lift off and blend it out from the recesses out onto our top kind of coat. So to demonstrate this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our brush here with the Reichlin Flesh Shade. And just here on the arm, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this all over this arm just like that. Then we're gonna wash the brush and then with a clean brush, we're just gonna absorb the paint off the flat of the muscle, like so. So we'll demonstrate that again here on the chest. So we layer on that like Reichland flesh shade, nice and thick. Like so. Wash the brush. And then once again. like so. So with that done, the majority of the flesh is now finished. However, what we do need to do now is we need to highlight some of the sharper features and his face as well. The color we're gonna be using for this is Kislev Flesh, first of all. And what we're just gonna do here is we're just gonna pick out all the sharp points. Around his face. like that, but what we're also going to do is we're going to pick out areas such as the fingers and the toes.
So with that done, just before we do the final spot highlight, well, I have one thing I've forgotten to do is to take some Caraba Crimson. I'm gonna use this on the bottom lip of our Ogor. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some flayed one flesh and we're going to add this to the absolute sharpest points of our ogre's face, hands, feet, and his nipples. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some black legion and use this to paint in his eyeball. Like that. So with that Black Legion applied, we're then gonna take a teeny tiny dot of Screaming Skull. I'm gonna add this. In each corner of his eye. And so with that done, still sticking with Screaming Skull, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to pick out each of his teeth. As well as to highlight all the areas that we've painted with Skeleton Horde. So these three fangs and a rope. So with that screaming skull all applied, I have actually added it to the teeth of the bear and of the uh, saurian down there. And I've also highlighted the uh, tusks or horns or antlers at the top there and highlighted the bones on the back of the bear as well. I forgot to mention it, I do apologize we've done it. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to move on. We're going to take some things down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our black details. So those black details all highlighted, as you can see on that shoulder strap. What we're going to do now is we're going to take some wraith bone. I'm going to use this to highlight the brightest parts of the fur. So with that done, just before we do that little brown section in the middle, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Administratum Grey. I'm going to use this to highlight our pale bandages and wraps. So with that done, we're then going to take some Bane Blade Brown and we use this to pick out our mid brown areas on the pelt, as well as to highlight all the wood details. And so with that done, we've got a couple of things left to do. And one of those is the Saurian head 
down here. And the color we're going to use to highlight this is Cyberite Green, but we're not going to do a full highlight because we've got such a lovely spectrum of colors on there. Instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little spot highlight, just picking out the sharpest point. around the head. So with that done, what we're now going to do is going to work on those metallics. And the first color we're going to be using is once again, Iron Warriors. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be re-layering this over the top of the flat sections of all of the metal work. Just add a little bit of shine back in there, but not to make it too bright. So with that Iron Warriors all applied, what we then do is we take some thinned down Iron Hand Steel. We use this to highlight all of that silver. And so with that silver all highlighted, all that remains is to take some Rune Lord Brass. I'm going to use this to just highlight our two little Rune Lord Brass sections on this sword. Like that. And to just relayer. Two studs there. So with that done, our model is finished. However, what we're going to do is we're going to do the base. And I really like this kind of full on snowy, icy scheme that they have used on the box art. So what we're going to do is we're going to replicate that. And it's going to be very, very simple. So what we're going to do here, is we're going to take some frost heart. I'm going to paint it all over the base. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Praxetti White and we're going to use this to dry brush the base. You don't really need to do the negative space, but you can if you want, like this. With that dry brush applied, what we're going to do is we're going to stick a couple of tufts onto the base. Now I'm going to be using some winter tufts here from Gamer's Grass. I'm just going to pop them in here, like that. And I'm going to take another one. I'm going to pop it there. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Valhalla and Blizzard and we're going to apply this over the whole of the base. this. What we also do is just take small amounts of this and just add it into the grass tuft as well. And so with some Steel Legion Drab applied to the rim of the base, 
the blood pelt hunter is now finished and i really enjoyed doing this one it's always nice to get quite a quite an organic miniature to have a go at with the contrast paints because that's really really where they absolutely shine over those kind of organic textures like the flesh and that saurian and the pelt on his back as well just a really really fun time had by all whilst painting this new blood pelt hunter has it inspired a full Ogamore tribes army i don't know maybe if you enjoyed this video you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you you can do so head to patreon.com forward slash war hipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash war hipster Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.